All three de-implemented medications demonstrated one or both of these clinical benefits. 1. Decreased rates of hospitalization and 2. Improvement in clinical scores. Wait, how can this be? That is not what the experts say. Almost the whole world disagrees with you guys. Doesn't the 2014 AAV bronchiolitis guidelines say to avoid these low-value medications, albuterol, hypertonic saline, and epinephrine in the outpatient setting? That's true. The guidelines strongly recommend against the routine use of albuterol, racemic epinephrine, and hypertonic saline in the outpatient setting to treat bronchiolitis. But we beg to differ. Our research reviewing the best evidence currently available found that many outpatients will benefit from these three de-implemented medications. We understand that this study goes against current opinion, but we encourage everyone to read the paper critically. This new paper is based on the most current and best evidence available. Our objective was to perform an umbrella review of all meta-analyses that included outpatient sub-analyses or network meta-analyses with medication treatment comparisons to study the clinical benefits of these de-implemented medications in the outpatient, i.e., primary care, urgent care, and emergency department setting. What is an umbrella review? An umbrella review, also known as a review of reviews or synthesis of reviews, is a comprehensive overview of multiple systematic reviews and meta-analyses on a specific research topic. It's designed to provide a high-level summary of the existing evidence by evaluating and synthesizing findings from various systematic reviews. Our umbrella review was conducted following PRISMA guidelines to ensure transparency and quality. Our inclusion criteria included 1. English language meta-analyses on bronchiolitis and the selected study drugs in infants and children. 2. Outpatient studies or outpatient sub-analyses with no date restrictions. Our exclusion criteria were 1. Studies that were only systematic reviews. 2. Non-English language studies. 3. Non-study drugs or treatment interventions. 4. Inpatient studies and 5. Diseases other than viral bronchiolitis. Okay, so what was your search strategy? We searched the citation databases PubMed and Scopus to identify published systematic reviews and meta-analyses on the following three topics albuterol and bronchiolitis, epinephrine and bronchiolitis, and hypertonic saline and bronchiolitis. A multi-step selection process was used to filter relevant studies for analysis. The meta-analyses and network meta-analyses were reviewed for outpatient sub-analyses focused on clinical responses and risk of hospital admission. Okay, how many studies did you find? This table demonstrates the total number of studies and breakdown of the study types for each drug. We found four total studies for epinephrine, 11 for hypertonic saline, and 6 for albuterol. The clinical benefits reported were either improved clinical score or decreased rate of hospital admissions. For all three drugs, the number of the total studies reporting either one or two clinical benefits were almost 100%. Did you discover any problems? Yes, due to the limited number of available meta-analyses on albuterol for bronchiolitis and, more specifically, Meta-analyses with outpatient sub-analyses, guideline writers relied heavily on the 2014 Cochrane Review titled, Bronchodilators in Bronchiolitis. We found suspected study errors. Unfortunately, the 2014 Cochrane Review included significant errors that were recently reported. These were 1. Incorrect data calculations. 2. Transposition of parent study results. 3. Incorrect inclusion of studies of oral albuterol. And 4. Inconsistent application of inclusion-slash-exclusion criteria in a manner that appeared to systematically bias the results. Because of the suspected data errors, our umbrella review performed data reanalyses of suspected errors to gain a clearer perspective of the potential benefits of albuterol. So, what did you find? After reanalyses of the data specifically relevant to this study, we found that the available evidence supports a therapeutic trial of albuterol in the management of patients presenting with a bronchiolitis syndrome. For epinephrine, we found that the available evidence suggests that epinephrine decreases respiratory distress and rate of hospitalization compared to placebo. Consequently, a therapeutic trial of epinephrine in patients presenting with a bronchiolitis syndrome is evidence-based and supported. We used albatross plots as a graphical representation of multiple meta-analyses where appropriate. Albatross plots are so named for their appearance. The curved wings in the center of the plot show the effect size found by each meta-analysis. The x-axis provides the p-value for each study and the y-axis indicates the number of patients. Albatross plots allow approximate underlying effect. They also graphically demonstrate if there is heterogeneity present between the different studies. 
This albatross chart presents the included epinephrine studies and their reported relative risk of hospital admission. Three of the four studies were statistically significant. This next albatross chart presents the standardized mean differences of the clinical or respiratory scores after treatment with epinephrine. Four of the five outpatient subanalyses are statistically significant. What about hypertonic saline? The de-implementation of hypertonic saline in the outpatient treatment of bronchiolitis is not consistent with the best and most current available evidence. A trial of HTS with or without a bronchodilator appears to be a safe and potentially effective treatment option. The hypertonic saline meta-analyses commonly presented a mixture of studies comparing HTS alone or administered with a bronchodilator. The evidence from the meta-analyses and network meta-analyses suggests that the best results are more likely when HTS is administered simultaneously with a bronchodilator. This albatross plot of meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials of hypertonic saline in preventing admissions of infants with bronchiolitis demonstrates that all the studies favored HTS, but statistical significance occurred most consistently when albuterol or epinephrine were mixed with HTS. Are there recommendations for future research? It was clear from our research that better studies are needed, and further well-designed trials should be able to clarify the degree of efficacy of these treatments in the outpatient settings. In summary, despite widely held opinions and strongly worded guidelines recommending de-implementation of albuterol, epinephrine, and hypertonic saline in the outpatient setting, we found evidence that these drugs have important clinical benefits. We invite our colleagues to take a close look at our findings as we feel the evidence is strong and may justify updating your hospital's bronchiolitis clinical pathways.